من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحسي نعماه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين والشفيع المضربين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد ولا أهل بيته التجبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين ظهب الله أنهم رسا وتحرهم تطحيرا ولا نتدامة الباقي على عدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاصب حقوقهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون صلوات من أكبر الله On the occasion of the Zarbat and Shahadat of Imam al Muttaqeen, Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wa salam, I try to talk about the spiritual status of Amir al Mu'mineen in the light of the ayat. which is in Surah Ma'ida, Surah number 5, Ayat 55. And based on this ayat, he is known as Waliyul Awliya, the master of the spiritual masters. On 19th, eve of 19th, we talked about it in detail, that all spiritual groups around the world, especially among the Sufis, all of them trace the silsila, the chain of masters and disciples back to Amir al Mu'mineen. And this is a unique status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Ali, in spite of all the attempts to put down his status, his name, and his image. It's important to look at the meaning of the wordings. Innama waliyukum Allah wa rasuluhu, walladhina amanu that verily your wali, your master is only Allah and his messenger وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't name Ali after Rasul for the reasons as I said we know and you know but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he uses the words and the mufassirin of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah Majority of them believe that this is an ayat which came regarding Ali in the event we talked the, the night before yesterday. Alladheena amanu. And who is the third wali of yours? Who is your third master after Allah and Rasul? Alladheena amanu. The one who has iman. Although the words are in plural, but it all refer, refers to one individual. The one who has iman. Yuqimoon as salat the one who does prayers, yutunas wa yutunas zakat, and gives charity, wa hum raki'oon, in the state that he is in ruku. When you look at this ayah, this is a very unique ayah. It only applies to Ali. It is interesting that you study Shia fiqh and the four mazayib of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, you will see that if you do anything outside the actions of namaz, your namaz becomes batil. You can't say you're not know, doing namaz and the cell phone rings and you say, hello, I'm busy doing namaz. <laughs> this will be outside the namaz. Your namaz becomes batil. Nowhere does it say that in the state of salat, to give charity is allowed. Charity is a good thing, but it doesn't go with namaz. With namaz. You have to do it later on. And so there is no mas'ala which says that to give in charity, in ruku, in namaz, is sunnah. 
neither in our fiqh nor their fiqh. But this was a unique situation which demanded the revelation of the ayat. Others later on tried to do that, but no ayat came. Jibreel didn't come. You know, so we had to realize that this is a very unique perspective that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to none other than Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. In the previous discussion, we emphasized his spiritual status as Valiyul Awliya, master of the spiritual masters. Tonight, I would like to look at the different angle of it. Not as Valiyul Awliya, but as Valiyullah. Now, you will say, you know, how can Ali be the Wali of Awliya and also Wali of Allah? This is where you have to realize the richness of this language known as Arabic, the language of the Quran. Many words have actually not only multiple meanings, sometimes, you know, opposite meanings. On Fridays, we recite the special ziyarat of our 12th Imam. There is a statement there where we say, Assalamu alayka ya mawlaya ana mawlaka. You are saying salam to the Imam of the time, and you are saying salam to you, O Mawlaya, O my Mawla. And then you are saying, Ana Mawlaka. Salam to you, O my Mawla, I am your Mawla. You are using the same words when you address the Imam, and when then you, you describe yourself. What does it mean? Salam on you, O oh, my master, and I'm your master? No. Mawla in the first place means the master. They're referring to our Imam. When I say, Wa ana mawlaka, mawla there means I am your slave. Same word used mawla for the Imam as a master, same word used for mawla for myself in the meaning of slave. This is the richness of Arabic language. You have to look at the context, context to understand what, it is, what does it mean. When we use the term wali, we say waliyul mu'mineen, waliyul awliya. We are looking at the relationship of Ali and those who are down. When we use the word wali for Ali in relation to other people, we take the word wali in the meaning of master. When we use the term wali for Ali about him, referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we call him waliullah, it's not in the meaning of master, it is in the, na in the, in the, na in the meaning of friend or somebody who is beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat from the Akbar. Is it clear? Or do you need me to repeat that? Wali in relation to the people means master. Wali in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means the friend of Allah or the beloved of Allah or somebody who is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is part of our kalima where we say La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah Aliyun Waliyullah. Salawat from the Akbar. On this spiritual level, when we talk about the status of Ali, what is the objective of that path of spirituality? What do you look for at the end? Everything that you do in the path of spirituality is to inculcate that love and hub between yourself and your Lord. You become muhib, and in return, when Allah loves you, you become mahboob. That is the end result that you are looking for when you walk on the path of spirituality. All Muslims, if you look at the ayat of Quran, and if you ask any Muslim, 
Do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is no one who will say, no, I don't live, love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman has to be converted into love eventually, if we are strong in that. But then the question is, how many of us are sure that while we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the assurance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us in return? And that is the difficult part of it. And that's where every Muslim will always pray that may, may that be the truth. That I love Allah and Allah also loves me. But there is only one example that I can see. If you really want to see a divine certification about a person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I love him, that's none other than Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. Ali is Waliullah in the meaning of the beloved of Allah. And this is confirmed. In the seventh year of the Hijra, because of the political situation in the Arabian Peninsula, the Prophet had to march against the Jewish tribe of Khaybar. There are many fortresses there, and most of them were very easily conquered by the Muslim army. However, there was one under the command of Marahab where Muslims went and tried. Prominent companions led the Muslim army, but failed, came back. And this is their history. One of them came back and complained to the Prophet that the army ran away. The army came later on and said, Rasulullah, the commander went away. You know, so different situations happen. And finally, Rasulullah said, okay, he announced that be prepared tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm giving, giving the flag of leadership and command رجلاً, to a man who loves Allah and his messenger الله and Allah and his messenger also loves him he is a fighter, not a runaway he will not return until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives victory in his hands. According to historians, and I was looking at even people like uh, Shibli Nu'mani, a very prominent Sunni alim of Indian subcontinent in this century, he says all the Sahaba were, you know, praying that, you know, may Rasul will select me. Even those who sometimes used to say we are not into position, they said at that, at least that night I had this desire that may I be selected. Next morning, all of them gathered outside the tent of Rasulullah. Rasulullah comes out. Nobody volunteered for that position. Why? It wasn't an occasion of volunteering your land. Because the first part you could say, Yuhibullaha wa Rasuluhu, that you love Allah and Rasul. The second part, Yuhibbuhullahu wa Rasuluhu, that Allah and the Rasul also loves him. So there was no matter of asking somebody to volunteer that position. Rasulullah looked around. And everybody was thinking, maybe his eyes will fall on me, or me, or me. And then he didn't see the one who, whom he wanted to see. And he asked them, Aina Ali, where is Ali? Quickly they said, oh, Ali is not feeling well. His eyes are hurting. Rasulullah didn't stop there. This is, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes wants to dramatize situations, it seems. Just to make sure people atten pay, pay attention to what's going on. You know, Rasulullah said, doesn't matter, call him. He comes, and Rasulullah called him 
clothes, took the saliva from his tongue, put it in his eyes. This is even in Sunni historians and Shia narrations also. Those who believe that Rasulullah is only a human being and nothing more than that, next time your eye hurts, put your saliva in there <laughs> and see if it works. Right away, Amir al muminin was cured of the pain and the Ill ailment that he had in his eyes. And Rasulullah gave him the, the alam and the command. And he goes, and you know the rest of the story, how he was able to conquer the fortress of Khaybar under the command of Marhab. Salawat Pernik Barawat. Let me go to my theme, spiritual status of Ali. Our narrators talk about this story. They narrate these words. But the entire focus and attention of the orators, as well as the ordinary Shias, who do not want to bring themselves to a higher level of spirituality, is focused on three words only that Rasulullah used there for Ali. One was Rajulan, he is a man. Karraran, a fighter who turns right and left and front to fight. Ghayra Farrar, doesn't run away. These are the physical attributes of Amir al muminin and no doubt he was. He had exceptional courage and strength that Ali never was defeated in any battle in his life. But that is the physical level. What is the spiritual level? Rasulullah mentions some, something which is very more, you know, very profound in those words. He didn't only say that that command that I'll give to a person, Yuhibullah wa Rasulahu, that he loves Allah and Rasul, but he said, Yuhibullah wa Rasulahu. Allah and Allah's mes messenger also loves him. This is where we see that this is the only confirmation that we have from Rasulullah as a trustworthy and truthful messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ali is the mahboob of Rasul as well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat <laughs> And that is why in our Adhan also we proudly mention this statement Ashhadu anna aliyan waliyullah. Salawat wa nekh barah. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi How does the status of mahboobiyyat to become the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how did Ali reach to that point? Because in the path of spirituality, the most important thing is total submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Total and absolute submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam, what is Islam? The word Islam itself means to submit. And when a person reaches to the total submission, that is when he becomes the mahboob of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at our namaz, you know, we should not just look at the ritual part of it. We should try to understand the spiritual dimension of namaz. The namaz itself, the way it has come to us, shows to us different levels of submission. We start the namaz with qiyam. We stand up. And then we go to the second stage, where we bend over with our hands on the knees. And then finally we go to the sajda. Qiyam is where we are standing up now to prepare ourselves, to submit Allah, ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ruku is half submission. And then we go into total expression of humility and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
If you pay attention even to the words selected for ruku and sajda, they are different. Because there are two different levels of submission. One is half and one is complete. In both zikr of ruku and sujood, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The praise is same, but the wordings are different. In ruku, what do we say? Subhana Rabbi al Azim. In the sajda, we say, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. Al Azim means the great. In Arabic, and our friends and colleagues are here, Al Azim is great. This is not the superlative form of that noun or, ad or ad adjective. Al A'zam would mean the most great or the, the, the greatest. Like Akbar, A'zam, A'lam. Among the Mushtahideen, we say we should look for A'lam, the most learned. If we just say Alim or Alim, the learned. We do not say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I praise my Lord the most great. We just say al azim But when we go to sajda, we don't say subhana rabbi al ali We use now the superlative form of the word. We say subhana rabbi al ala Because when I was in ruku, this was just half submission. Now that I go to sajda, this is the expression of my total submission and humility to you. And therefore now I use this superlative term to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not as al-ali, but al-ala, the most high and the most noble. Salawat from the Akbar. That's why when we are told that the salat is mi'raj of a mu'min, not in ruku, not in qiyam, it is in sajda. The more we put ourselves down, the more elevated becomes our soul. That becomes the mi'raj for a mu'min. So when we talk about spiritual path, we have to realize total submission is the key to become mahboob of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where the law is not only now emanating from here to from the abd to the lab to the rab, it also comes from rab to the ab. And this is where we have to realize when we look at the life of Ali. The life of Ali, not only his namaz, his entire life, whatever he did, was submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Ali spoke, he spoke for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Ali was silent, he was silent for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ali took out the sword and he would fight, he would fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ali will put down the sword and be silent, that will be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Ali was kind and gentle to some, that was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he was, you know, firm and, you know, very strict with others, that was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if, if he was pleased with some or angry with others in both situations, that was for the rida and the ghadab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat upon the Akbar. And when Ali reaches to that point, where whatever he does is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then nothing belongs to him. Even when he speaks, it is not him now. And that is why we will say Ali is Lisanullah. He is now the tongue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in a symbolic sense, when you basically see that him using his hand, with Zulfiqar in whatever situation, that was totally the story I mentioned yesterday. In the case of Amr ibn Abdabud, 
there was 100 person with total sincerity to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When that hand is used in that way, it is no more the hand of Ali, it becomes Yadullah. When you look at that face, which never ever bowed down and put the forehead on the sajda to anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that face becomes a wajhullah in the symbolic sense. And that is the sign of total submission to, will, to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat Muhammad Akbar. Allah Muhammad Akbar. And when Ali becomes the embodiment of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we can understand why did the Prophet say, Annadharu ila wajhi Ali in ibadah. To look at, at the blessed face of Ali is an ibadat. Because this is no more the face of Ali. This becomes wajhullah. There's so many narrations by different sahaba on this issue, even from Aisha, where she was talking to her father one day that, you know, I was noticing that you are sitting there in the company of the Prophet. Although the Prophet was there, but you are constantly staring at the face of Ali. What happened? And the father says, you don't know the Prophet had said, ila wajhi Ali in ibadah. I was not looking at the face of Ali. I was doing the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat from the Akbar. A Shia of Ali is not good enough for us to know him as a Khalifa only. And just as an Imam in that sense. He is our Wali. He is also our spiritual master. And we have to follow his example. Of course, we cannot become like him. But at least a little bit we should try. And if we try, Allah's, Allah's help would be there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he says, Allah is the wali of the believers. He pulls them out of dhulamat, darkness. What darkness we are talking about? From the spiritual darkness into the nur, to the level of spirituality where there is light and only light. And so we have to make that effort. You know, we, when we talk about the submission to, will, to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in ibadat, and this is a point I would like to really leave it as a, as a message, even how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't have our own choice. Subha namaz, two rakat. Zohar prayers, four rakat. I can't sit down and say to Allah, Allah, you know, in the morning I'm more fresh-minded. I have some extra time. By noon hour I'm busy, my mind is in business. So I'm going to switch the numbers of rakat. Do four in the morning and two in Zohar. Is that going to be acceptable? No. We have to do the prayers the way he has asked us to do. The whole point of prayers, the way it has come, is to instill this spirit of submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at fasting. We have fast and very comfortable means of transportation. And, you know, we get this question. Oh, these days it's so easy, you know. I'm traveling and I don't want to lose the spirit of Ramadan. Brother, which spirit of Ramadan you are talking about? The one who made the fasting in Ramadan wajib, he himself says, Man kana maridan ala aw ala safarin fa'iddatun min ayyamin ukhar. The one who made it wajib, he says, if some among you is not feeling well or is traveling, he has to fast some other days. And I want to say, no, I'm going to lose the spirit of Ramadan. Just think about it. The whole process is to learn how to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have another problem these days. It has come to UK and now even to North America in certain circles of the mu'mineen. Oh, I love Ali so much. 
and I want to include his shahadat of vilayat in tashahud. After saying ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu, I want to say ashhadu anna Ali and waliullah before the salawat. Baba, who are you? Are you more Shia than the Imams who came from the descendants of Ali? This is where we to realize even in ibadat, we have to submit, do the ibadat the way it has come from Allah through the Rasul and through the path of the Ahlul Bayt. Salawat from the Akbar. Yes, we believe in Ali. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his prophet has brought the namaz in such a way that you are a Shia or a Sunni or Sufi or a Wahhabi. You don't even men, not, you do not only mention Ali in namaz, you also mention the entire Ali Muhammad in the salawat of sal uh, tashahud. All Muslims from Shia to the Wahhabi, they do the salawat in the tashahud on Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. It's already there. It's already done in a way that even those who oppose the Ahlul Bayt still recite that. And they say it refers to Ali Muhammad, the family of Muhammad only. Salawat from the Akbar. The first sin committed in human history according to the Quran was which one? You will say Qabil, I'm going even further up. Shaitan. What did he do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to do sajda to Adam, and he refused. How did he justify that? He said, basically, oh Allah, you are my Lord. You are my Khaliq. You are my Raziq. I only do sajda to you. I'm not going to do sajda to somebody who is even inferior than me. Maybe Allah, should, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have, should have rewarded him. Oh, you are a very good muwahid. <laughs> no, he becomes a regime, accursed. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even if you want to worship me, you will have to worship me the way I want you to worship me. You can't make your own choices in my own ways that this is what I think is better. No, because worship means submission, total submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat from the Akbar. And so learn, learn this submission from Ali. You know, on the eve of 19th, I said that when Ali stands on Musalla, He is oblivious of the surrounding. His body is here, but his ruh is at the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can actually sense the jamal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a question sometimes comes up, what does it mean? Are you saying Ali saw Allah? No, no, we are not doing shirk here. This will be kufr. Somebody came to Ali and he says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Hal ra'ita rabbaka hina abattahu? O oh, Ali, have you seen your Lord when you worship him? And the answer came even more surprising. Waylak, ma kuntu a'abudu rabban lam arahu. Ali says to this person, What do you think? Am I going to worship somebody whom I don't see? So the answer was even more conf con confusing than the question. Because he says, I'm not going to worship somebody I do not see. And so this follow-up question came up. Kaifa ra'aytu? How did you see your Lord? This is where Amir al-Mu'min now clarifies the reality. He says, Waylak. لا تدركه العيون في مشاهدة الأبصار. The eyes cannot see him face to face. ولكن رعته القلوب بحقائق الإيمان. 
the hearts are able to perceive him through the realities of belief and iman. Salawat from the Ali is saying, open the eyes of your heart. This is where you'll be able to see the Jamal and the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not through these eyes. And then he goes and talks about him in detail where he says, he is closer to you, but not in a sense that you can touch him. He is far away from you, but not in the sense that he is separate from you. And, you know, the descriptions go on. Salawat from the Akbar. So Amir al muminin reached to that level of spiritual, you know, stage where he was able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the eyes of his heart, not by this vision of the eyes. And that is where you see he utters the words where he says, ma ra'aytu shay'an, that I had never seen anything, illa ra'aytu, ra'aytu Allah qabluhu wa ba'aduhu wa ma'ahu. He says, I don't see anything, but that I see Allah before it, and after it, and with it. Means there is no moment in my life where I forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was there always with Amir al muminin And that is why he on one hand becomes Waliul Awliya, and on the other hand he becomes Waliullah, the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat from the Akbar. Amir al muminin ke Urahani Kamalat ke Salsileh mein کوشش کی ہے کچھ باتیں آپ کے سامنے پیش کریں ولایت روحانی وہ مرتبہ ہے کہ جس کے بارے میں اس آیہ ولایت کو دیکھیں سورہ مائدہ کی آیت یا دوسرا حدیث ہیں ان کو اگر دیکھا جائے تو ہمارے سنی علماء بھی مجبور ہو جاتے ہیں کہ علی کو ولی الاولیاء مانتے ہیں بلکہ ایک کانٹیمپریری سنی سکولر ہیں انہوں نے ایک عجیب جملہ کہا ہے پاکستان کے پاکستان کے گیدرنگ میں کہا تھا یہ اب پتہ نہیں اب وہ کہیں گے یا نہیں کہیں گے چونکہ ان کے خیالات کچھ بدل گئے ہیں انہوں نے شیعوں سے کہا تھا کہ علی صرف تمہارے خلیفہ بلا فصل نہیں ہیں ہم بھی علی کو خلیفہ بلا فصل مانتے ہیں لیکن انہوں نے اپنی جو ہے حرفت ہوتی ہے فن جو ان کا ہے انہوں نے کہا کہ ہمارے یہاں ابو بکر بھی خلیفہ بلا فصل ہیں علی بھی خلیفہ بلا فصل ہیں کیسے ہوگا بھائی کہہ لیں وہ پولٹیکل سکسیسر ہیں اور یہ سپیریچول سکسیسر ہیں دونوں ایک ہیں دونوں ایمیجر سکسیسر ہیں ایک پولٹیکل لحاظ سے ہے اور ایک سپیریچول لحاظ سے ہے تو جہاں تک امیر المومنین کے سپیریچول سٹیٹس کی بات ہے یہ حقیقت وہ ہے جسے کوئی انکار نہیں کر سکتا ہے اور جس طرح سے ہم نے شب انیز کو کہا تھا کہ ہم شیعہ ہوتے ہوئے بھی ہم نے علی پر ظلم کیا ہے علی کے مجاہدات اپنے جگہ پہ ہیں جنگ میں جو کمال ہے وہ اپنے جگہ پہ ہے خیبر کا دروازہ جو اکھاڑا تھا جو خود امیر المومنی کہتا ہے یہ مت سمجھو کہ یہ ہمارے فیزیکل طاقت سے ہم نے اکھاڑا ہے بلکہ یہ قوت ربانی ہے یہ سپریچول طاقت کی بنیاد پر ہم نے اس کو اکھاڑا ہے تو وہ اپنے جگہ پہ ہے لیکن کبھی کبھی ہم بھول جاتے ہیں کہ امیر المومنی نے ولی الاولیاء بھی ہے اور اس لحاظ سے اگر علی کو دیکھا جائے ان کی سیرت کو دیکھا جائے اور ان پر عمل کرنے کی کوشش کریں تو یقیناً ہمیں اندازہ ہوگا کہ یہ ولی الاولیاء بھی ہیں ایک طرف سے اور ولی اللہ بھی ہیں دوسری طرف سے سلوات پڑھنا ایک پارا ہوگا بس ایک اور واقعہ ایک حدیث کہ علی جو ہیں محبوب خدا ہیں رسول اسلام کے خدمت میں ایک شخص جو ہے ایک برڈ کو اس نے خریدا یا کیپچر کیا 
اور اس کو روسٹ کیا بریان کر کے رسول کے خدمت میں لے آیا حالات سے لگتا ہے کہ رسول اللہ کے لیے نارمل غذا نہیں تھی یہ ذرا اسپیشل غذا ملی تھی رسول کو کسی نے یہ ہدیہ دیا تھا رسول کے جو خادم تھے ان کا نام تھا انس جو مدینہ کے رہنے والا تھے انصار میں سے تھے یہ مکہ کے قریشی نہیں تھے مہاجر نہیں تھے اس وقت جیسے ہی وہ روسٹیڈ برڈ کو رسول کے سامنے رکھا ہے انس نے تو رسول اسلام نے عجیب غریب دعا کی اللہ اتنی بے حب خلق یا اکل معی حابت تیر خدا بندہ ابھی میرے پاس اس بندے کو بھیج دے جو تیرا محبوب ترین بندہ ہو جو میرے ساتھ اس میں شریک ہو تنہا نہیں کھانا چاہتے تھے گھر میں بہرحال بہت سے لوگ تھیں لیکن وہ چاہ رہے تھے اس کو جو محبوب خدا ہو انس نے یہ جملہ سن سنا کہ رسول نے تین بار یہ دعا کی ہے ریپیٹ کی ہے اس کے دل میں خواہش ہوئی کہ کاش ہمارا انصار کا کوئی آئے تھوڑی دیر میں کسی نے نوک کیا اس نے دیکھا علی ہیں علی تو انصار میں سے نہیں ہے کہہ دیا رسول اللہ بیزی ہیں تھوڑی دیر کے بعد پھر علی آئے دوبارہ وہی ہوا تیسری بار خود رسول اللہ نے کہا انس کون ہے دروازے پہ تو اب انس جو ہے مجبور ہوا کہنے کے لیے علی آئے ہیں رسول اللہ نے کہا بھیج دو اسی کے انتظار میں ہم بیٹھے ہیں سلامات پڑھنے کے بارے دعا تھی بے احب خلق کہ تیرے مخلوق انسانوں میں سے جو سب سے محبوب احب سپر لیٹو ٹینس ہے یہاں موسٹ بلوڈ جو ہے اس کو بھیج دیں اور یہ جو ہے صرف ہمارے یہاں نہیں ہے بے کثرت آپ کو یہ سنی محدثین سے یہ روایت ملے گی تو یہ ایک حقیقت ہے مسلمہ ہے اسلام کا اور تاریخ کا کہ محبوب الہی رسول کے بعد امیر المؤمنین علی بن ابی طالب ہیں سلوات پڑھنے کے بعد اور یہ اسی وقت ہوتا ہے کہ جب بندہ بھی اپنے کو مکمل طور پہ اللہ کی مرضی اور مشیت الہی کے تابع کر دے علی نے جو کچھ کیا اپنی مرضی سے نہیں کیا ہے جو کچھ کیا ہے وہی ہے جو مرضی الہی کی بات تھی اور اسی لیے جو جملہ ہم نے انگریزی میں پیش کیا تھا کہ ما رعی تو شعی ان اللہ رعی تو اللہ قلب قبل ہو و بعد ہو و معاہ ہو کہ ہم نے کسی چیز کو نہیں دیکھا بلکہ اللہ کو اس سے پہلے اور اس کے بعد اور اس کے ساتھ دیکھا ہے یہ ہمیں وقت کا تصور جو ہے ہر انسان کے بس کی بات نہیں ہے شہادت کے واقعات میں بھی آپ دیکھیں کہ جب ضربت لگی ہے خصوصاً جس کے پاس علم غیب ہوتا ہے اس کا امتحان اور سخت ہو جاتا ہے باتوں کو جانتے ہوئے بھی اختیار نہیں ہے کہ اپنے ذاتی معاملات میں اس علم کا استعمال ہو یہ بھی ایک امتحان ہوتا ہے جب تلوار ابن ملجم ملعون نے لگائی ہے اور اس شدت کے ساتھ لگائی ہے کل ہم نے کہا تھا کہ جنگ خندق میں امر ابن عبد ود نے جب حملہ کیا تھا امیر المومنین پر تو شروع میں اس کا وار جو ہے علی کے سپر کو توڑتا ہوا علی کے پیشانی پر آ چکا تھا علی اس جنگ میں زخمی ہوئے ہیں بہرحال امر کو ختم کر دیا اور سال ہر سال کے بعد ابن ملجم نے جو تلوار چلائی ہے تلوار اسی جگہ پہ جا کے لگی ہے جہاں امر ابن بدھ نے حملہ کیا تھا اس شدت کے ساتھ وہ تلوار لگی ہے کہ یہ سر اس پیشانی سے ملا ہوا جو وجہ اللہ ہے یہ تلوار آ کے مغز علی تک پہنچ جاتی ہے زخل اتنا گہرا تھا آپ سوچ لیں اس کیفیت میں انسان کیا سوچے گا اپنے سر کی اس تکلیف کی بات کرے گا آہ و بکا کرے گا 
روئے گا مدد کے لیے لوگوں کو پکارے گا لیکن علی کے روحانیت کو آپ دیکھیں اس عالت میں بھی زبان پر جو جملہ آئے ہیں وہ جملہ یہی ہے فست و رب القعبہ رب کعبہ کی قسم ہم کامیاب ہو گئے خداوندہ تیرا شکر ہے کہ علی بستر پر مرنا نہیں چاہ رہا تھا اگر اس دنیا سے جانا ہے تو شہادت کے بستر سے جانا ہے عزداران حسین اس کے بعد بھی ہر مرحلے میں دیکھے ابن ملجم کو جب گرفتار کر کے لایا گیا اس وقت بھی امام حسن سے نصیحت یہی کرتے ہیں ارفق بے اسیر ایک اپنے اسیر کے ساتھ مہربانی کے ساتھ پیش آنا عزداران حسین علی کو لحاف میں رکھا جاتا ہے اور مسجد سے گھر تک پہلی بار خندق اور خیبر کے یہ سپاہی اسے اٹھایا گیا ہے اتنے قدموں سے نہیں جا سکا گھر کے قریب پہنچے ہیں اور حمام حسن سے کہا ہے میرے اصحاب سے کہہ دو کہ گھر سے دور چلے جائے عجب نہیں یہ اشارہ ہو کہ میں اپنی بیٹیوں کے رونے کی آواز تمہارے کانوں تک نہیں جانا چاہتے ہیں عزدار آن حسین امام گھر میں لائے جاتے ہیں بستر پر لٹایا گیا زینب ام کلسوم اور دوسری بچیاں آتی ہیں بابا کی اس قیفیت کو دیکھا اور رونا شروع کر دیتی ہے تھوڑی دیر کے بعد ذرا خاموشی ہوئی اسبن بن نباتا امام کے وفادار ایک صحابی تھے بہت ہی قریبی تھے وہ فرماتے ہیں کہ صحابہ سب چلے گئے میرے لیکن میرا دل جو ہے تیار نہ ہوا کہ حسین علی کو دیکھے بغیر جائے دروازے پر بیٹھ جاتے ہیں تھوڑی دیر کے بعد اندر سے عورتوں کی رین رونے کی آواز آئی اسبغ صبر نہ کر سکے رونا شروع کر دیتے ہیں حسن نے جب سنا ہے باہر آ کے کہتے ہیں اسبغ مولا نے کہا چلے جاؤ اسبغ نے کہا کہ میرے لیے اجازت لے ایک بار اور دیدار کرنا ہے امام حسین جب اجازت لے کے آتے ہیں عزداران حسین اسبغ کی روایت ہے ہم نے دیکھا مولا کے پیشانی پر ایک پٹی بندی ہوئی تھی لیکن چہرے کا رنگ اتنا زرد ہو چکا تھا کہ پٹی ٹی بھی اور چہرے میں فرق نہ رہا ہم نے رونا شروع کیا مولا نے کہا سبغ مت رو تمہارا امام اب بہتری کی طرف جا رہا ہے دنیا کی مسئیبتوں سے آزاد ہو رہا ہے بہرحال عدد عوران حسین کوفہ کے سب سے بڑے طبیب کو بلائے جاتا ہے جو ڈاکٹر تھا وہاں پر اس نے آ کے اس زخم کا معاینہ کیا اور معاینہ کرنے کے بعد جب اس نے دیکھا کہ یہ اس امیر المومنین سے کہتا ہے کہ وہ تلوار جو ہے اس کا وار مغز تک پہنچ چکا ہے اور زہر کے آثار اس پر ہے لہٰذا کوئی امید نہیں ہے آپ وسیعت کرنا شروع کرے عزدار آر حسین اکیسوی کی صبح نمودار ہوتی ہے علی نے سب کو جمع کیا صبر کی تلقین کی امام حسن کو امامت کے جو امانات تھی ودیت کی امام حسین کو بھی ان کے سفارش کرتے ہیں آخر میں سب سے کہا صبر سے تلقین لینا لیکن جب طبیب نے یہ کہا تھا کہ علی کے لیے صرف ایک ہی خواہ خوراک ہوگی وہ بھی صرف دودھ ہوگا جب بھی دودھ کا پیالہ لایا گیا مولا آدھا دودھ کھانے کے بعد پیالہ بڑھا دیتے تھے کہ جا کے ابن ملجم کو دیکھو یہ نہ ہو کہ میری تیمارداری بے اس کی غزہ کو تم بھول جاؤ اتنا کریم ابن کریم امام تھا آخر میں وہ وقت آتا ہے کہ جا علی کہتے ہیں میں نے اپنے حبیب رسول کو دیکھا ہے فاطمہ 
بھی آ چکی ہیں میرے مجھے لینے کے لیے بس علی کی روح جسم سے جدا ہوئی وا محمدہ کی آواز وا علیہ کا نعرہ شروع ہو گیا زیداران حسین یہ جنازہ چلا ہے اور صرف گھر کے کچھ لوگ موجود تھے دفن کرنے کے بعد سو سب ان سوحان دے امام کے قبر کی مٹی کو اپنے سر پر ڈالا اور پھر ایک مرسیہ پڑھتے ہیں جہاں حسن اور حسین بھی بہت ہی گریہ کرتے ہیں بس ایک جملہ کہیں گے مولا آپ بھی علی ہے آپ کا نواسا بھی علی ہے وہ بچپنے میں اس منظر کو دیکھ رہا ہوگا کہ دادا کے تدفیر میں ساسانے نوحہ پڑا مرسیہ پڑا ہے لیکن آیا علی زین العابدین بابا کے لاشے کو بے گور و کفن کر بلا میں چھوڑ کے جائے ماتم حسین 